Hello and welcome to this E4Clicks Project Estimator training video. Today we're going to look at maneuvering through your RS Means guides. So we're going to look at some of the different panels on the guides window. We're going to look at some of our basic maneuvering options for getting around in the guide. We're also going to take a peek at some of those guide icons that give us a little more information. And then we're going to cover a tip. We're going to look at how to quickly find our demolition line items in each division in the book. All right, so we'll swing over here to the 2016 RS means building construction book and we can see our windows open here we've got some panels at the top and we've got some panels at the bottom and the side and of course our middle one which has the most of our information there so these are our actual line items but these other panels have some good info as well <clears throat> so we could switch between different views one will show the short description there that's that makes it look just like the RS means physical book and if we look at the bottom here, we can see that we have the full line item description down there. So everything that's indented up and to the left is included in that line item. All right. If we want to, we can switch over our displays here to standard, and we can see that full description. But to me, it makes it a little bit harder to, to read, because here I can just look for the differences in each line item, and then down here I can see the full description if I want to. So that's how I kind of do it. All right, let's like it, uh, take a look at another little thing. So let's jump over to, oh, let's go to Division 21 here. So I'm going to make sure my focus is here. I'm going to switch over to 21, and I'll show you some of this, how I'm moving around a little bit in a minute. But what we've got here is we've got some different pricing now that we can see on the screen here. Okay, now our setting here is for bare cost pricing. We could also have O&P pricing, and in some guides, even in-house pricing. All right. To switch between the two, we can kind of look at our different prices here. It's like this one, 647. If we switch over to O&P, we're going to see that jump up a little bit. All right. If we switch back, I'll jump back down. Okay. We can also click on a column header, and that'll switch our cost back and forth as well. All right. Now, if we were kind of paying attention here, as we change those prices, we could see the prices over here change. So as we alluded to earlier, this read-only panel down here shows the full description of the line item. This panel over here shows the pricing information for the line item. All right. It also shows the crew. Sometimes there'll be a crew assigned to this, and it'll be more than one ELEC, which is one electrician, and it'll start with a letter. And in those cases, we can double-click on that area right there and it'll show us what is actually included in that crew. So there's a nice little tip for you. Okay. Now be besides bare cost pricing and O&P pricing, we can also integrate an RS Main City Cost Index into each line item. Okay. Now just for our edification here, we want to apply the City Cost Index just one time into our estimate. If we apply it more than once, then we will have double dipped our value and get an inaccurate results. So either we integrate the city cost index, how I'm going to show you right now, directly into each line item, or we bring the line items in just like they show up in the RS means physical guides, and then on top of that in our totaling or our markup stage, then we apply a percentage to take the, the book up or down depending on our location. Okay, So let's just take a peek at using it right here and integrating it into each line item we're going to see that we can turn on the Use City Cost Index, use this little pull down to select our city here, and there's a couple different percentage ways that you can apply your percentage here. I'm going to go ahead and select the city here. And then we can see that those different schemas, we can choose whether we want to be division level, so every single different division or subdivision at the material and installation level, or the total level, or we could put on a weighted average total, material installation and the total. I'm just going to go ahead and do the weighted average total, and you'll see that it applies a percentage of 86.9 to that number, and we get another number. So here, if we want to show exactly what the book was, we might want to do our city cost index at the totaling level, as opposed to doing it right here, where we'd actually change the values in the book if somebody wanted to verify with the hard copy book to see what they are. All right? So I hope that kind of makes sense to you a little bit there, but those are some of the different panels that we have, and they kind of obviously affect our pricing and how the window looks. Okay? 
So let's jump over. I was jumping around a little bit, but let's kind of see what I was doing. Okay, so some of the time I was using the mouse, other times I was using hotkeys, okay? So I was basically using the keyboard to maneuver around. So let me show you what we got, all right? First, let's look at the locate field. So this field we've seen before, but let's go over some of the details of it again. We can, the locate field only looks at one column, okay? And in this case, it's the line item number, okay? So if we want to navigate by the line item number, we can do that. Okay, so if we wanted to find out or jump straight to the structural steel members, which we all have memorized that number, I really don't, but I wrote it down for this case, but we could just type in 05, 12, 23, 75, E4 clicks will put the dashes in for us and it will let us find that number real quick. Okay, and jump us right there into the book. Pretty cool. Now, how do we clear our locate field? Anybody remember? If we hit backspace, That'll take us one, it'll delete one at a time, obviously. If we use our up or down arrow keys, basically move through our list, then it will clear out the entire locate field, okay? Now, did you notice that I was keeping my focus right here in the book, and then I was typing in my numbers, all right? If I clicked up here into the locate field, then I wanna go back to the very beginning of the book. If I click into the locate field, then I have to press the tab key on the keyboard, leave that field basically, and then the guide will jump for us. So if we keep our focus down here, it works just a little bit faster, all right? Side note, if we're gonna look for um, finding items based on words, that's where we're gonna go back to our search utilities, which we covered in previous videos, and use those, okay? So let's look through this a little bit. I'm gonna jump around a little bit. I'm gonna go to the beginning of division nine, okay? Here, we can see that I've been moving around, and I've been doing that with my arrow keys on the keyboard. So up and down arrow keys will take us up and down through the book one at a time, okay? If we'd rather use our mouse and our scroll bar here, we could use the up and down arrow keys to move up and down one item at a time. You may have also noticed that I had used the page up, I'm going into division eight now, and page down, I'm back into division nine, to kind of flip the pages of my electronic book, if you will, okay? We could do the same thing with our scroll bar here, is if we click above the middle, that page is up. If we click below the middle, that page is down, similar to what we've seen. The biggest difference in our scroll bar is that this doesn't move, okay? So with these many records, okay, it's just hard for us to grab and move through. So it's actually a stationary, middle section and it just shows us that we can click above it to page up and below it to page down marrying up with our hotkeys on the keyboard page up and page down all right now you may also see that we can jump directly to the first item in the book with the home key and the very end of the book with the end key kind of cool huh all right so let's use these kind of tools and search around and let's find some stuff Okay, uh, specifically, let's look at so, what some of these different pricing guide icons mean, okay? So first of all, we can right click, we can go to our tools, and we can come over here, and we can see this item here, explain the icons on this window. What this will do is bring up pricing guide icon legend and show us what these different icons mean, all right? If it has a star, that means it's a new line item, to this year's guide, okay? F means it's in our favorites, as we saw in the favorites video. R are references. I means there's an image associated with this item. And G means it's a green item, okay? So let's take a peek at some of these. If we see the R here, we can just click right on it and it'll open up a nice PDF here that we can read, print, or even share if we'd like. So we can see that information, okay? We'll close that down. Um, but let's go look at some of these other ones. So I'm going to jump to 26 in the book real here quickly here, and we can see the stars here. So these are brand new items in this year's guide. And you can see that um, we've added some labor adjustment factors to the entire 26 division. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So that kind of gives you an idea. 
All right, so here's references again. Here we see favorites. Um, if we see a reference with multiple references, when we click the R, it'll give us the option of which one we would like to open, which is kind of cool. All right, so we just highlight the one we'd like to open, click open, and it'll do that. Okay. Let's swing over to another area of the book, and let's look at 05. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to go to 05 here and page down a couple of times. And here we can see a couple of those other examples. Okay, let's go to I. If we see an I somewhere here, that's going to put a little image up at the top right of the window there and let us see maybe kind of a picture of what we're looking at. All right, so that's kind of handy in there. Now we see the G as well. So RS means highlights a lot of line items as being possibly green items, okay? So we have to evaluate ourselves at the estimators whether it is actually a green item or um, if it's not, depending on our circumstances and stuff. But they tagged a whole bunch of them and have a whole book out there um, of green line items. All right? Pretty sweet, huh? So those are kind of the pricing guide legends and kind of give you some more information on that. So some of those references are pretty handy to look at. All right. I told you I'd look at one more thing here and show you how to quickly find the demolition line items in the book. Does anyone know where those are at? If you answered Division 2, you were correct a few years ago, but RS Means has moved those. They've actually moved them to the beginning of each division. So let's go to 09, all right, and we can kind of look. The 0901 series is a little bit of maintenance, okay? So they're doing some carpet maintenance and some wallboard, wallboard repairs, that kind of stuff. Let's page down one more time. And we can see when we go to 09.05, we see common work results for finishes. And if we go to 09.05.05, we see the selective demolition for finishes. Okay, we can see ceilings first, we can see flooring next, then we'll even jump into walls and partitions after a bit. Okay, so again, I'm paging down to move through that a little bit. So the demolition line items are going to be at the beginning of each division. And as we saw, it's actually the 0505 section, um, but as we can see, it's pretty close to the beginning. So if we went to the beginning of 05, we're going to see maintenance, and then we're going to see those common work results. And again, 050505 is going to start us our selective demolition for metals. Okay? If we did 26, 050505, again, we're in the selective demolition for electrical. Okay, so I kind of... I hope that kind of helps you out a little bit, all right? So you can find those maintenance sections and maybe even more importantly, those demolition sections a little bit easier. All right, so I hope this video has helped you maneuver through the guide a little bit, give you some hints and pointers on how to maneuver around and kind of uh, um, just make you just a little bit more efficient, all right? So hopefully this helped. Please look at our other training videos or give us a holler if you need any help at all. Thank you so much and have a fantastic, fantastic day.